Good evening, everybody. Uh, first things first, uh, you may or may not recognise this shirt from uh, the Coach Blackpool, the CDP video uh, about people uh, about getting his subscribers rated. Uh, the video is uh, it, uh, looks uh, it was looks episode three. Uh, are you attractive or something along those lines? But you'll remember me as the second guy, and if you look back at that video, uh, I'll once again I'll leave it in the description below. You will see that I was wearing this shirt. So there is the proof that I am actually the second guy in that video. So don't think I'm lying because that is me. Same shirt, you'll see it, and it's exactly the same stage it was back then. Now, that beard's come up really nicely. Actually, I'm very happy with it. Very happy with this video. Looking good. So today's uh, video this evening is going to be uh, three parts. The first thing I'm going to talk about is what I promised in the previous episode. And okay, I'll just find the article. Now there's a bookstore in Sydney. And it's called Kinokinoya. It's a Japanese chain, Japanese bookstore chain. Uh, and it there's a store in the Sydney CBD. Um, let me find the article. That's not it. It's not it. So here it is. Sydney Bookshop. Uh, it's from uh, it's the uh, mobile.abc.net.au. Uh, if I can find it on the internet on my laptop after this, I will leave a link in my description of the video below. It's from mobile.abc.net.au. Uh, ABC News. Uh, it was on uh, last Saturday. Uh, Okay, so the title is Sydney Bookshop Kinokanuya Bars Dating Company Using Pickup Techniques on Female Customers. I'll read it out. Okay, there's a little photo there before which the article starts. It says, The popular bookstore said staff noticed interactions which seemed quote unquote forced. Okay. A much loved bookstore in Sydney CBD has issued an apology after discovering a dating coach was instructing clients to practice pickup techniques on female customers as they browsed for books. The key points. Kinokanoya said customers were subjected to unsolicited and unwanted attention. The bookstore issued a warning to people caught uh, using pickup artist's techniques. The store has not received a response from the dating coach about the incidents. Kinokanoya, which claims to be Australia's largest bookstore, said it was forced to take action against a dating coaching company after numerous complaints of in-store harassment. After investigating the issue, Kinokanoya management found the company was using the bookshop as a place for clients to get practical experience and try out pickup strategies. Kinokanoya has chosen not to name the dating agency but says it has demanded that they keep out of the bookstore, which sits atop of the galleries on George Street. Managing Director Kawai Yusuke told the ABC he was dismayed people were using a bookshop as a place to target women. There was an intent to these interactions, and our customers were not finding them to be positive, he said. They may have been operating for a while. Mr Yusuke said several customers had contacted the store after being approached and staff noticed some interactions that seemed forced. The bookstore issued a warning on their Facebook to any other companies who may be considering using Kanokanoya for practice runs. We say don't come in. There's a photo here. In-store security will now be on alert to catch those bothering female customers. So they actually put in-store security 
if you go and uh, look out for these uh, potential PUAs or wannabe PUAs to go and move them out of the store. A number of women have since realised the true motivation behind interactions in the bookstore over recent months. This happened to me and I just thought it was some random moment. I'm so glad it's been addressed and hope it gets nipped in the bud, Hilary Locke said on Facebook. It's sad others have to have, have had this experience while just browsing books. Ms Locke told the ABC she and a friend both had similar experiences and, left and felt uneasy after being approached in a very full-on manner. The man was obviously trying very hard, she said. <laughs> it... <laughs> oh. I got, I've been accused of that many times in the past. You've got to try hard. It seems to me that coaching service, uh, that this coaching service was using Kinokanuya as a place for men who might be socially awkward but also have an interest in comic books or manga as a way to get them talking to people. Uh, Ms. Locke said it was disappointing many, many women had to tolerate such behaviour while just going up about trying to browse books. Kanokanuya in-store security will now target anyone, giving unsolicited and unwanted attention to others, and customers are being urged to notify staff if they are uncomfortable. Management said they hoped the behaviour of pickup artists would not discourage genuine interactions between book lovers. Gosh. <laughs> it's, like those, it's like those lockout laws they had in Sydney. Um, it's like the people who... Um, there were coward one-punch attacks, and basically what happened is they locked the whole city down, they locked all the pubs down after a certain hour because of a, a certain few individuals ruined it for everyone else. It's like anyone who wants to go and have genuine interactions is now going to have their genuine interactions and you're not going to be ruined because of these wannabe pickup artists harassing women all the time. Oh. The bookstore should be a place for discussion, Kanokanuya said. Mr. Yusuke told the ABC he had not yet received a response from a dating company. Well, I'm not surprised. Okay, I'll find that article, uh, if I can find an article on the uh, internet, I've got the, actually I've got the web address here, so I'll just pop it into my browser uh, after the, when I do this, uh, uh, upload this video, I'll pop the uh, web address in and, and you can all have a read. It's quite funny. Uh, do I agree with this? Um, let me just say, I've done a day game boot camp. Uh, it is, it's a grey area. Um, on the one hand, I I can understand why guys would go out and, and, and try to approach women. I, I, I totally understand that you you know you, you're um you, you're trying to meet women and you as you've been told and, and, and yeah, you, you're honestly taking their advice on board, thinking it's the right thing to do. You're going out to a bookstore, chatting up a woman using the advice they gave you, and women. A lot of these places that these uh, PUAs and dating coaches tell you to meet women during the day, a lot of these women. They don't really, they're not going about their days open to being met uh, in that kind of fashion. Um, I'm going to get a little bit more into this. I'm going to do a review on the uh, pickup artist day game boot camp I did back in 2007. But I know that a lot of what they teach is, now, I, I, I don't know about the other, other companies. The company that taught me told me that the best thing to do is to cut out a lot of this uh, High intensity banter during the day because it's not it doesn't match the energy uh, of the uh, in daytime environment and in most cases that is correct uh, it doesn't uh, to to drop that out of the repertoire and uh, just maybe uh, have a direct or an indirect approach and maybe just have a, a quick witty witty line or two and then drop it at that and then dive straight into uh, comfort and, and wide and deep rapport with a woman that you're just meeting. Which is all well and good, but then again, you are just assuming in that case that she's already attracted to you. Because if she's not attracted to you, then it doesn't matter how much rapport you want to drop into, the woman's not going to have a bar on it. And that was my experience, on, the, on a lot of my experiences on the, uh, the boot camp. There were some good experiences where women were polite, that they held conversation, but for the majority of the times they didn't. And, and as long as they weren't attracted to you, they, they kind of cut the conversation short or didn't want to know in the first place. With regarding uh, shops and going in and harassing um, female clientele, there was, um, so as I was saying, on the one hand, uh, I can understand it, but on the other hand, 
I can understand where these women are coming from. Now, the, I was going to tell you the story. That's why I, I, I just had to, to get back on topic because, as I said, there's one on the one hand, I can understand where the PUAs are coming from with this and, and the students, but on the other hand, I can understand why women don't want to be harassed. When I was doing this boot camp, uh, I was uh, on the first day, we had two days of in-field work, and on the first afternoon... Uh, we went into uh, Myers, which is the mat most biggest chain store. It was a, it's a big chain store in, in Australia, Myers. Um, and this was the biggest Myers store in Sydney, the one in uh, Westfield, Sydney, in the Pitt Street Mall. Uh, and I remember I was I was assigned to a uh, young guy who was one of the PUA instructors uh, to take me around in the field and, and, and do what I needed to do to put it into practice. Uh, he was from... Uh, I think it was somewhere in California, it was either LA or San Fran. I think it was from Los Angeles. And um, as we were going about, so we went through Maya, we were walking through Maya, through the big retail department store. And we went up to a floor which was selling women's lingerie. I didn't approach anyone there. Um, however, we walked past the head instructor of the company doing this. Okay, so. He came up to us and he says, oh, how's it going, guys? He was asking me how things were going. I was telling him about the approaches I'd done up to that time, the ones that I could remember. And uh, the guy who was assigned to me, the, the pickup instructor who was assigned to be my wing, uh, said, look, I'm going to go and have a look for something. Why don't you hang around? Um, I won't mention the guy's name, but he was the head instructor of the, the course. And uh, see uh, if you can pick up some tips and learn a bit from him. I said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I might do it. Uh, for about, you know, until you come back, uh, we just, he said, oh yeah, we'll just be around here. So I was walking around and um, with him, and he approached two girls shopping for bras. Yeah, yeah. He approached two girls, Cole, who were in the women's lingerie shop section shopping for bras and women's underwear. That's ballsy. These women, uh, they were, then the, the head instructor would have been he would have been in his early 40s, mid 40s at the time. Uh, I was in my early mid 30s. These girls would have been in their early 20s. This guy is in his mid 40s. They're in their early 20s, and he's cold approached them in the women's lingerie section as they're as they're shopping for bras and underwear. Well, you can imagine what happened. They were polite to this guy. I mean, he was he was running his shot. And they were polite to him, but they, they looked very uncomfortable. And I could tell from the looks in their eyes, the way they were looking at each other, and the body language they were giving him, they were very uncomfortable. And I was just standing around watching it. He introduced me and he says, oh, this is my friend uh, from Sydney, who is with me at the moment. So I said hello to the girls, and they were polite to me. They said hello. And he just kept talking. I didn't want anything to do with the interaction. He just kept talking with these girls. Bear in mind the age difference and where he's doing it. Uh, they kept looking at each other, giving each other like the eyes like, let's get away from this creep. They were looking at me. They were looking at me like, um, they, they didn't think I was a creep. They were just looking at me like, uh, as if to say like, uh, uh, like begging me. They gave me this look like they were begging me to try to get this guy away from me. They wanted me to get this guy away from me. They were looking at me. So I was talking, like so I said, oh, I, I saw them looking like that, and I couldn't get this guy away. So like, I interjected into the conversation. I said, oh, yeah, which part of Sydney do you live in? And I was telling them about, you know, what, what I do, and, you know, it was just general conversation, general chit-chat. They were polite to me. But all along, they gave me this look like they wanted to get this, they wanted me to get this guy away from them. If I knew this guy, as he said, and I did, through the boot, through the boot camp, the head instructor, they were looking at me like, get this guy away from us. Get him to stop talking to us. This is so embarrassing and the wrong, this is just wrong. I think eventually the, the head instructor got the message. Uh, after they, were, they they started shutting him down and didn't want to talk to him anymore. But uh, he was trying and trying very hard. I will say that. And uh, he walked away and he didn't mention to me anything about that interaction. And then I met up once again with uh, the guy who was taking me, and then we said goodbye and went on. So I can understand the context of, of where you're trying to meet women during the day, but a lot of the times during the day, 
women on their own or women out with friends, they don't want to get approached, random cold approached by guys they don't know as they're going about their day to day business unless they're attracted to these guys already or they're giving signals to the guys to come and approach. The daytime is a very, very tricky time to meet women. The, these dating coaches who, and PUAs who push day game need to realise this. Women are not in a state, in a social place where social norms are different to bars and clubs and any night spots. They are different. And a lot of these dating coaches don't seem to realise this. And they push their clients to do things during the day that are too forward, too creepy, and just not really expected or wanted for that environment. And that is why, one of the big reasons why, I'm uh, really against these PUAs trying to push this day game theory onto young guys to meet women in places where women aren't going about wanting to meet guys. It just doesn't work out. Anyway, that's my say. Now, a couple of other things I wanted to talk about in this video. Okay, there is something. Now, I'm looking up a definition. I'm just going to set up a definition on my phone so I can get to the point of you ready for this. Okay, so what I wanted to, I've got the definition ready. What I wanted to talk about was people who say, you don't get lucky, you make your own luck. Does that make sense? If you make something happen, then it's not luck. Luck is chance, is circumstance. It is not made. Luck happens. It doesn't get May if you make your own luck, you are not making luck. You are using skill. People say, oh, you need to make your own luck in this world. No, you don't. Luck happens. It's a chance circumstance. It happens. Making luck equals skill because the making is something you are doing. Luck happens independent of what you are doing. Now, the definition of luck Luck. Luck. Now, success or failure apparently brought by chance rather than through one's own actions. Thank you. So, you don't make your own luck. Luck happens. If you make your own luck, it is skill, not luck. People tell you, oh, you need to make your own luck. No, that, what, they, what they're saying is you need to work hard and use skill to make something happen. What they need to say is you need to make your own destiny through your own hard work. You can't make your own luck. Luck happens independently of what you do. It is chance, it is circumstance. It is brought by chance rather than through one's own actions. Now the final thing I wanted to discuss was I was walking back and I grabbed some late lunch late in the afternoon. I was walking down the street. It was the first day back at school for school kids today. And I was walking down the street and I grabbed a uh, lunch. It was takeaway. And as I was walking with my takeaway lunch, uh, I came across a group of young, uh, young girls, school-age girls in their school uniforms, They've been in year 11 or year 12 in high school. They're finally two years of high school. And these girls, there were nothing, nothing out of the ordinary about them, but there was one girl in particular. This girl, I don't know if she was in year 11 or 12. Uh, she was Asian, ethnicity. I saw, obviously, that's, that's a dead giveaway from her face. Uh, she 
was now I'm five foot six. This girl wouldn't have been. These girls in high school were her final years of high school. She was at least five foot eleven, so she was towering over me already in her flat school shoes. And not only was she towering over me, she her 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 the size of her body, the build on her body was far bigger than mine. So I looked like a little uh, a little short little stick next to her. And this girl, mind you, this girl hasn't even finished high school. And she's Asian ethnicity. And she's already, as the incel community would say, she's quite mocking me. And she's frame mocking me. This is a young girl. She would, uh, what age did they finish high school? 16, 17. So she would be somewhere between the age of 15 and 17. No, no older. She's already taller than me. She's already bigger than me. And with with the frame that she's got, the body frame and the height that she's got, she could, I mean, if I went up in a fight with her, I don't know if she knows how to fight, but she'd have me for weight and size. She, she would have me. It's scary thought that young kids are growing up like this, uh, this big already. And um, it just puts into perspective where I am. The five foot six, uh, thin frame, thin boned, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, the size of me compared to some of these young kids, especially especially young guys, but also young girls, is quite a quite stark contrast. Now, when she gets when a woman like that gets older, they'll probably still look up to you as being someone experienced. Like you know, oh, you got a, you, you're a great guy, you got a lot of experience, you can teach me things. But they'll never see you as as, as a physically attractive man uh, compared to what they've got. And then I thought about this later, and I thought to myself, do I really want? to bring kids into this world, passing on my genetics, if I find a looks match woman and pass on my genetics, the kid's probably going to get, the, the chances are, and I, I will bet my life on this, the chances are with the way other kids are coming out, the couples who are producing kids with their genetics these days, the way that the, way the kid would come out, chances are that if they were in school, they would undergo such severe bullying. Is it something I want my kid to go through when I when I put them through school? The answer is definitely not. I went I was bullied as a kid, not so much physically, but more so mentally bullied and made fun of. There was a little bit of physical bullying, but it was mostly mental and making fun of. Would I want my kid to go through the same thing that I went through? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Thus, would I want to bring kids into this world today? You have to go up against bigger, stronger kids with genetics from parents who are bigger and bigger built and taller than me. The answer is no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. That is one of the reasons why I don't want to have kids because I really don't want to pass on these crappy genetics that I've got to the next generation where most of the kids coming through have all got these blessed, wonderful genetics. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, and uh, notify uh, anyone you think would be interested in seeing my videos. Please pass them on. Man Overboard signing out once again. You have yourselves a very good day, evening, or night. Goodbye.